All right, in this video, we are going to talk about section 4.4 about contingency tables and then joint and marginal probabilities. All right, so um, first off, the difference between univariate and bivariate data. So um, data involving one variable of a population is called univariate data. And that's basically what we've been looking at up until this point. Uh, so, but a lot of times we are uh, not only interested interested in one aspect of a population, one variable, we're interested in two variables or even more. So data from two variables of a population are called bivariate data. So as an example, let's take a look. It says, uh, this is problem 4.112 from our book. It says motor vehicle use the Federal Highway Administration compiles information on motor vehicle use around the globe and publishes its findings in highway statistics. Following is a contingency table for the number of motor vehicles in use in North American countries by country and type of vehicle during one year, and frequencies are in the thousands. Uh, so the two variables that we are interested in are the country of origin of the motor vehicle or where the motor vehicle is currently located and um, then the vehicle type, whether it's an automobile, motorcycle, or truck. So there's two variables involved here, okay? So this is just an example of uh, bivariate data, all right? And you can see it's summarized in this table, all right? So the frequency distribution for a bivariate data is called a contingency table or a two-way table, okay? And the um, small boxes inside this rectangle here are called the cells of the table or the contingency table or the two-way table, okay? And so they give the frequency distribution. So for instance, in the United States, there are 129,728 thousands, right, uh, in, uh, vehicles that are in the US and aut also automobiles, okay? In Canada, right, there are 320 thousands, right, of motorcycles that are in Canada, right? So these are the counts of those vehicles. Uh, so a joint probability distribution is similar to a joint frequency distribution, that's what we just looked at right here, right? This is a joint frequency distribution, but a joint probability distribution is very similar. Uh, it's just that the probabilities are displayed instead of the frequencies, right? So here you can see these are all probabilities, right? And this would be the probability, you know, if that uh, of selecting a random uh, North American vehicle that uh, it would be a motorcycle in Mexico is 0.001, okay? Uh, so the probabilities in those cells of the table are called joint probabilities, all right? And the joint probability, each one of these numbers in here uh, it's going to lie at the intersection of one of the rows and one of the columns in the table, right? And so if you have some events, uh, whatever the row event is, in this case, it's being a motorcycle, and whatever the column event is, that number at the intersection of that row and column is going to be the probability of A and B, where A is the event in the row and B is the event in the column. Okay, so for instance, if I randomly select a vehicle, North American vehicle, the probability that it is from Canada and that it's a truck is this number right here, 0 0.029. So a truck in Canada, right, is this probability right here, right? Okay, so in the outside of this box here, outside of the box where the joint probabilities are, there's are some other probabilities, right? You can see them listed. Those are called the marginal probabilities, all right? And the marginal probabilities give the probability of the event in the row or column that they appear. So for instance, if I wanna know, if I randomly select a vehicle from North America, 
what is the probability that it is an automobile, right, would be 0 0.623. Or if what is the probability that I randomly select a vehicle that it's from Canada, right, would be 0 0.084. Okay. All right. So those are the marginal probabilities. All right, in this exercise here, 4.108, they want us to fill in the missing entries in the contingency table. So let me take a picture of this. bring that up so I can edit it. Okay, so first off it says fill in the missing entries of the contingency table. So what I would do, right, is uh, the first number to calculate here would be uh, this number right here in this uh, cell, right? Because I have the total 32 and um, I have the number in this row, or, uh, this cell right here. And these totals, right, have to be the sum. So 32 minus 20 gives me 12 right here, all right? Uh, so then from there, I can say, okay, well, 15 minus 12 is 3, right? These two have to add up to give me 15. And these two have to add up to give me 18. So this would be 15. Okay. And then um, 15 plus 20 is 35. And to get this grand total here, uh, you just either have to add these two or these two. Don't add all four of them together, right? So 35 plus 15 comes out to be 50 right here. All right, you can add these two to double check yourself. Do they add up to 50? And they sure do, okay? All right, so now they wanna know in part B, what's the probability of C1, right? All right, C1 is this event right here, right? It's in one of the columns, so that will be a marginal probability right here. So it'll be 35 over 50. All right, um, probability of R2, that's one of the events in this row here. So if I, it's going to be a marginal probability, I look across and the total is 32, R1. Oops, I wrote C2, but that should have been, I should have written R2. And we want the probability of C1 and R2. All right, so C1 and R2 would be the intersection of the C1 column with the R2 row. So that would be right here. That would be just this number 20 over the grand total, right, which is 50. Okay. All right, so that is part B. In part C, right, they want to know, construct the corresponding joint probability distribution, right? So C1, C2, total, R1, R2, and then the total here. So what you would do to, to construct the corresponding joint probability distribution is just put the probabilities in here, right? So 15 
divided by 50, that would go here, 15 over 50. This would be 3 over 50. This would be 18 over 50. 20 over 50. 12 over 50. 32 over 50. 50 over 50. 35 over 50. And then 15 over 50, like so. All right, and those, you could also do that as decimals if you wanted to, right? So instead of having the fractions in there, you could have 15 over, divided by 50 is 0 0.3. And 3 divided by 50 is 0 0.06. All right, and so you could do that for each one of these. So you could have these numbers reported as decimals too if you want to, okay? Um, if you do round them off too much, then this um, might be affected a little bit, but uh, that's okay. All right, so that's it for this one. All right, let's take a look at the next example. All right, the next example is very similar. All right, it says fill in the missing entries in the contingency table. So let's do that. Oops. Okay, so here in this table, um, I would start here, right? Uh, this four and one plus one gives me five, and the total is supposed to be eight, so that would have to be a three right in here. And then that would give you a six, a six here. Uh, that would give you a um, an eight, right? In there. So this would be eight. Uh, that would make this a seven, right? And then that would make this a 12. All right, so there's your contingency table, right? Uh, finished out. It says determine the probabilities of C1. That is one of the columns, right? C1, so it's gonna be this marginal probability down here, 12 over 20. And probability of R2, that's one of the rows, right, in this case. So the probability of the event R2 would be this marginal probability, or in the margin over here, 6 over 20. And then the probability of C1 and R2, right? That would be one of the joint probabilities here. So I would look at where the event C1 is and where the event R2 is, right? And look at the intersection of that column and row. And there's a seven, right, in there. Oh, sorry, I went up to one. C1 and R2, rather. There's a 2 in there. And so it would be 2 over 20. Okay. So that is part B. And part C, they want to know the corresponding joint probability distribution. So you would just put the probabilities in uh, the table rather than the frequencies, the counts. All 
All right, so this would be 3 out of 20 in here. 3 out of 20. 6 out of 20. 2 out of 20. 4 out of 20. And so on and so forth. All right, the 20 is coming from the grand total. And just like in the last example, you can list these as decimals if you want to as well. All right, and that is it on this example. All right, so here I have the probabilities instead of the frequencies or counts. All right, let's do one more example in this, and then we will um, separate the others out into each into their own video. All right, so we're back to this example with the um, Okay, so um, 4.1.12. Uh, 4 All right, uh, so uh, the Federal Highway Administration compiles information on motor vehicle use around the globe and publishes its findings in highway statistics. Following is a contingency table for the number of motor vehicles in use in North American countries by country and type of vehicle during one year, and frequencies are in the thousands. Okay, so um, part A says how many cells are in this table, right? And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's a three by three table. So the answer to part A is nine. All right, part B, it says how many vehicles are Canadian, right? So here they want to know the count, right? So how many vehicles are Canadian? 20,000. Three hundred ninety one, and that is in thousands, right? So you can either put thousand here or add times it by a thousand, like this, okay? Or you could just say thousand, however you want to report it. Um, we didn't worry too much about that when we were talking about. Uh, probabilities right because of the fact um, that the thousands would be in both the top number and the bottom number uh, when you're computing that probability so it, it basically cancels each other out uh, but here if we're reporting the frequency or the count right we need to indicate that just so it's clear okay so next up part C how many vehicles are motorcycles right so motorcycles that number would be over here so that would be four thousand four hundred and sixty one and again that's in thousands part d they want to know how many vehicles are canadian motorcycles so that's can canada and motorcycles so that's the intersection of the canada column with the motorcycle column that's 320. again thousands All right, part E, they want to know how many vehicles are either Canadian or motorcycles, okay? So Canadian or motorcycles. So what I'm going to do, that one is not one that we can read, right? That's the or of two events, okay? 
So you could use the, um, the well, here we're just counting those up, right? So, um, so what I'm going to do is go through and I'm going to circle um, all of the vehicle categories, all of these nine things in here, right? That are all of the nine cells that fit this category. So either Canadian or motorcycle. So when I go to each one, I just need to ask myself, hey, is this Canadian or a motorcycle? Well, no, it's in the US and it's an automobile. Is this Canadian? Absolutely it is, right? So this is one of the numbers that would figure into that. Is this Canadian? No. Nope. Or is it a motorcycle? No, it's not. Is this Canadian? No, nope, but it is a motorcycle, right? So it fits that category of being either Canadian or a motorcycle. So all of these do as well. All of these do as well. All of these do as well, okay? All right, so I would add those numbers up, okay? So uh, let me pull up Desmos and we'll do that very quickly. All right, so 113,131 plus 3871 plus 320 plus 270 plus 6933, okay? So I get 24,000 532 okay now you may say hey well why uh, why can't I just add these numbers why can't I just go here right and go well there are 20,391 uh, Canadian vehicles and there are 4,000 461 um, motorcycles. So why isn't the answer 24,852? Why is it 24,532? And the answer is if you do it that way, right, you would count this 320 Canadian motorcycles twice. So this is like when we were talking about the generalized addition rule for probabilities, right? You can do it this way, but you've got, it's tricky, right? In the sense that you've got to remember, if you add these two marginal probabilities up, it's going to count anything that's in both the row and the column twice. So you're going to have to subtract it back out like so, okay? Because it got counted in this number and it got counted in this number. It got double counted, okay? So you've got to be careful on those, all right? All right, part F. Well, let me erase these marks. All right, it says then, uh, part F says, how many automobiles are Mexican? So we want the number of vehicles that are both in Mexico and automobiles. Right, and so that would be just this cell right here, the cell that's common to Mexico, right, and automobiles. So 8,607,000, ,607 which right can also be written as 8,607,000. Um, all right, part F, or no, part G. Last one here. Uh, how many vehicles are not automobiles? Okay. Uh, so over here, what we would do there's a couple ways we could do that, right? So vehicles, we know that there are 4,461 motorcycles and 87,160. Um, 
trucks, right? And so we could just add those two numbers together. When we add them together, we get 9, 1, uh, 6, 2, 1. Balance. All right, here we don't have to worry about overcounting, right, at all, because motorcycles and trucks are two completely different things, right? There's no overlap in, in those at all. So we can just count the number of motorcycles and the number of trucks and be done with it. Okay. All right, that is 4.112. And I think that we are going to leave that there. All right, and we will separate these uh, further examples out into their own um, into their own videos.